Well, data out of China shows that exports grew more than 7% in June from a year earlier, but still missed market forecasts. However, it was the fastest pace in five months, and one Reuters poll expected more than 10% in export growth from China. Imports also disappointed, rising 5.5% in June, but that was still an improvement from last month. The trade figures got a boost thanks to Beijing's series of mini-stimulus measures. The government says more needs to be done policy-wise to offset sluggish foreign demand. Now, as we've been covering and mentioned, the sixth round of the China-U.S. Strategic and Economic Dialogue Summit just wrapped up. And joining us now with some perspective is Chen Jiaha, commentator from Cinda Securities. Thanks for being with us tonight. All right. right, let's get straight into the heart of the matter. From an economic and business perspective, what do you think was the biggest outcome from the Strategic and Economic Dialogue? Well, the biggest outcome would be that China and U.S. is agreeing on many new things. I mean, currently, we're expecting two great things. Well, not in this session, but in the future, you will see that China and U.S. probably work on something like the free exchange rate and the opening up of the capital account. And we can see all these and looking, we, we can see some signs from the, this conversation this time, but we probably won't see that fully done in the next five to ten years. But anyway, it's a start. From a concrete point of view, though, do you think that progress was made in the bilateral investment treaty? Where do you think we saw some solid results? Well, things like the free trading, the more uh, recognition of each other's market. I mean, these things are quite solid looking for me. All right. Well, going into the discussions, China was hoping to get more clarity from Fed Chair Janet Yellen and Jack Lew about the ongoing economic recovery in the U.S., the wind down of quantitative easing and the debt ceiling showdown that's due to happen March of next year. Do you think that China got that clarity from the U.S.? Well, the U.S. is in a quite critical moment at the moment because of the quantitative easing has uh, really brought up the financial market. But the real economy is still pretty sluggish compared with the financial market. China needs the U.S. economy to be strong to bring its export forward because currently the Chinese property market is on a problem. We can see the property price is very expensive right now. So. Uh, well, if you look at the ratio, I just compared one of the flats in Beijing compared with this any rent. That was 70 times. I mean, look at U.S. before 2008. That one was only 35 times. So looking at all these ways, I would say China really need U.S. to be having a great economy over there so the export can be sustained because China is heavily relying on property and export. But do you think that they got the clarity of what they can expect from the Fed given that it does impact the rest well, of the globe? That's the thing. I, I, don't US, I, I don't think U.S. government can really give a kind of promise for that because that's not what they can control. I mean, right. the whole economy. They can do is to say, well, yes, we will keep on doing the quantitative easing. We will not quit it too quickly. But who can really control the U.S. economy? I mean, if they can really do so, they have done so in 2007. So they can give the promise the as much as they can. Uh, 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 what about the currency issue? Yeah. You mentioned that earlier, and the U.S. still maintains the position that the yuan needs to appreciate further. You said that there was some progress yeah. and that we could see something in the future. What kind of timeline do you think, and what do you think we can see? Well, I think the timeline would be quite long in the future because China is having a full control over its economy. I mean, China is a huge country with 1.3 a billion population. So therefore, they, they will need a free exchange system in the future because this has been proved by the global experience that this is the most effective way. But you can't really have that in probably two or three years. But I would say in the future, maybe five to ten years, you will see the currency is keep on moving towards the right level, mm. probably under control. But it will be more free, and I think it will be keep on appreciated. Because currently, if you look at the price figure, China's price is on average about only the 50 percent of the United States. That means we are exporting things on a cheap price. That's even well, that's not a good thing for China either. I mean, so China really needs appreciation, I think, as well. Well, on the upside, the BIT talks seem to be on track. Do you think this is a minor breakthrough or a big step forward? What's your take? I wouldn't say it's a minor breakthrough, but it's certainly still not a big breakthrough. It's because if you look at things here, 
what, what can you call a big breakthrough, I mean a subtle breakthrough? It would be the opening up of the capital account. It would be free of the exchange system uh, that you can exchange your currency at whatever the rate the market wants. These are the biggest breakthroughs that we are expecting, that we want to walk to maybe in 20 years' time. However, you can't really do that in just two or three years. So I think they're okay, working on this, they're talking on opening of the... Yeah. Certainly a lot of uh, room for progress to be made, but overall, how would you rate the talks and what do you think is the biggest point of contention? Well, I think the talk, when you look at that, the current political system and the military, uh, the current political situation and the military tension the two countries are having right now is that if you can make such an economic talk in this kind of environment, that's good enough. I mean, you can't really compare this with the time when nothing is happening. But if you compare this with the current tension that is there, you would see the outcome is quite good. I mean, they start talking about opening up of the markets. China is keep on deregulating the government policies on many areas, not only toward the United States, but toward the international market. I mean, all these things are quite progressive. I mean, if you look at the current situation there. All right. Thank you for your perspective, Chen Jiaha, a commentator from Syndicate Securities. Mission.